What to do, YouTube? Obviously, hashtag shock the world wasn't a success. The Miami Dolphins ended up falling to the Dallas Cowboys, thirty-one to six. Honestly, I feel I feel like we got a lot of takeaways from this game from the Miami Dolphins' perspective. Uh, like I said earlier, we lost the game, but we got some positives out of this. And I would like to start off with Josh Rosen. Honestly, I felt like in the first half. Josh Rosen played a, a very good game. Um, the the receivers, they they didn't exactly do enough to help out Josh Rosen with the drop passes. But Josh Rosen, I felt like he did enough for his first start uh, to win the game. To be honest with you, the Dolphins deserve to lose this game. They literally deserve to lose this game. Uh, starting off with the first actual drive, uh, Jason said, we went all the way down inside – Dallas Cowboy territory inside the red zone. Uh, we should have punched it in for the touchdown, but we didn't. And Jason Sanders ended up missing the field goal. First drive for the Miami Dolphins. First drive. We left points right there on the board. Then the second drive for the Miami Dolphins, we ended up kicking a field goal. Uh, there was a drive towards the end of the first half. Kenyon Drake ended up fumbling the football. We was live streaming it. Uh, somebody actually said this is the Chicago game all over again from last year. Yeah, honestly, I don't think Kenyon Drake should be taking any type of carries um, in, in inside that red zone area. I really don't because I feel like he, it, bad things happening in, in them type of situations. But when you look at the game, honestly, in the first half, we played a very, very competitive game. Don't let the don't let the score fool you. Like we was on, we was this, the score going into halftime was six to ten. It was a one possession game, and like I said, the Miami Dolphins deserve to lose this game because they left points on the board. The Dolphins should have been leading this game. The Dolphins literally should have been leading this game. And for those who who are continuing on with this tank for Tua stuff, let it go, man, because. Like, it was a clear indication today that the Miami Dolphins were trying to win this game. And the clear indication was the Miami Dolphins kicking the onside kick after we kicked the field goal. The second, the first field goal, excuse me. After we kicked the first field goal. Unfortunately, we, we ended up getting called back for the penalty offsides on us. We Because we ended up receiving, we ended up uh, recovering the fumble. Excuse me, recovering the kick. It was just... Uh, un unfortunate that we got the, got the offsides penalty called on us. So that tank for two and stuff, I should not see that in the comment section no more because it was clear today that the Miami Dolphins came out and tried to play to win this game. Um, but like I said, again, uh, the Miami Dolphins, they deserve to lose this game because literally um, – there was points that was left out on the board. There literally was points left out on the board. And one of my biggest concerns going into into this game was how the secondary was going to re, react with the big shuffle with Minka Fitzpatrick moving, going to the Pittsburgh Steelers, being traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, Rashad Jones being out with that ankle injury, and then Bobby McCain came down and played the nickel corner position, and Jamal Wilts moved up to safety. And then we have Stephen Parker uh, ends up starting at the at the strong safety position. So we had a lot of shakeups in the secondary. Uh, it was it was proven today. Uh, Dak Prescott threw from nine, uh, threw, was 19 for 32, threw for 246 yards, passing two TDs and one pick. Bobby McCain ended up getting a pick. It was a nice um it was a nice pick considering the fact that Dak Prescott did have a lot of time in the pocket. That was a huge issue for me going into the second half. Uh the Miami Dolphins really were unable to put pressure on Dak Prescott. And one of my biggest pet peeves with the Miami Dolphins in the, in this Brian Flores defense. I see a lot of three man rushes. Like that is just unacceptable for me. And it's not unacceptable for the Miami Dolphins to come out in three man rushes and giving Dak Prescott all the time in the world to end up just just shredding us on defense in the secondary. Like these these the defensive backs are not that talented to be able to cover that long. And Xavier Howard. Um, not to say that he ended up getting torched on those three-man rushes, but uh, Amari Cooper, I felt like he had his way with Xavier and Howard. Uh, Amari Cooper had what, six catches, 88 yards, and two touchdowns. So, like, literally, Xavier and Howard had a really bad day today. Literally, I'm thinking to myself while I'm watching the stream, like, come on now. Um, did something happen last night? Did something you need to talk about, man? Like, come on. Like, this is not the Pro Bowl best corner of the league caliber Xavier and Howard that I'm used to watching. And Amari Cooper was having his way with him. And I'm like, damn, like, I know Amari Cooper's a bad, you know, pretty good route runner. But damn, like, it's like that, though. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, Xavier Howard, he really did not look good in, in the first half against the Miami Dolphins. Uh, I mean, excuse me, against the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Amari Cooper. I uh, did want to touch on um, on this offensive line because honestly, I felt like the offensive line they they played a fairly de- did a fairly decent job in the first half. Didn't give up no sacks. Uh, from 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 what I know of, they didn't give up any holding penalties either as well. Uh, but uh, Jesse Davis did get hurt in the first half. Ended up having an- injuring his arm. Uh, and we end up having to make an offensive line shuffle. We end up moving Dieter out to the right, I mean, excuse me, to the left tackle position. And then Evan Bo- Boheme ended up going to the left guard. Of course, Daniel Kilgore stayed at the center position. Shaq Calhoun at the right guard. And, of course, we have a, and, and Webb at the right tackle position. Moving forward, um, based off of what I've seen from Michael Dieter, on the outs at the left tackle position, he has he he, he has, has some good, it has some bad. Uh, Robert Quinn did have his way with him, I believe. It Robert Quinn ended up having two sacks during the game, uh, maybe a little bit more consistency there for Michael Dieter. But uh, I feel like I I I I will probably get Michael Dieter probably like a a, a B minus, a B minus, a short a short notice uh, put in at, at at left tackle. He he did he did fairly okay. But one thing I did want to point out about this Miami Dolphins offense, uh, Josh Rosen in the first quarter had a hundred yards passing. And for those, I, this is this is really I, this video is for you, Miami Dolphins fans that literally wanted Ryan Fitzpatrick to play the whole season. This is what I, this is for y'all. I want y'all to be the first ones in the comment section because y'all be the ones be like you're delusional. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, okay, so but Josh Rosen literally made the team look a whole lot better uh, in week three, even though we ended up losing the game. But he made the Miami Dolphins offense look a whole lot better. Like I said, the Miami Dolphins deserve to lose this game. Like this, like we left a whole lot of points on the board. We left a whole lot of points on the board. Uh, but um, I'm just just the drops by the wide receivers. I know I said touched on this earlier, but the drops by the wide receivers, Preston Williams. Had quite a few drops. Um, it's just his consistency is a big issue, man. Like we gotta, I gotta see some more consistency out of Preston Williams moving forward. Uh, honestly, I don't, because people were talking about oh, who are we getting rid of, who are we getting rid of. If anything, Preston Williams is going to stay on the team. He's most definitely going to be a keeper. I see he can be a star in this league. Um, Devontae Parker, he had a night, a night, couple of nice catches, had some drops too as well. There was one in the, in the first half going toward, go, go, going towards the second half, probably like a minute left in the second quarter. He ended up dropping a, a underneath route and it literally went right through his hands. It could have ended up being in the Dallas defensive back's hands for interception. So, um, yeah, the drops during this game were just I – mean, they were just they were just crazy. But, uh, yeah, Josh Rosen overall, I'll probably give him the grade of a – I give him a B plus. Uh, he didn't. I. I probably. I'm gonna say that he didn't finish the game. Like he finished the game, but from as far as performance in the second half, he did not finish the game. Uh, we was unable to put up any type of points in the second half, which is unacceptable. And then after they scored that first, after the Dallas Cowboys scored that first touchdown going into the second half, it just it they, it was just a call for torrential rain because you just play right into the Dallas Cowboys hands where you just hand the ball to Ezekiel Elliott and let him just take you home. Let him, let him just take you home. He ended up having 19 carries, 125 yards. Literally, he was average 6.6 yards a carry. Uh, I saw I started to notice the Miami Dolphins front line was starting to break down uh, after the King and Drake fumble. Literally, Ezekiel Elliott had three straight runs back to back. Was able to put them in put them in hail hail mary territory. But right at that point where they gave up those big runs, uh, it was like, oh man, uh, I feel like I feel like they 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 chipped the armor right here. They literally chipped the armor. Uh, but we bring it back, dead body of the day, dogs. We bring it back, dead body to the day. It is going to the Dallas Cowboys defensive back. Uh, what was his name? Awuzie. What's his first name? Can't really. I'm trying to find his first name, but it's going. It's going to Awuzie. Every time Josh Rosen ended up throwing the ball deep down the field, uh, whether it be to Devontae Parker or uh, or Preston Williams, uh, Awuzie seemed to be in coverage on that. Uh, but it's unfortunate, man. The Miami Dolphins starting off 0-3, but I feel like we took a step in the right direction, man. Uh, next week we got the Los Angeles Chargers. Then the week after that we got the bye week. But at least we have some 
assurance that the Miami Dolphins are not tanking. They're actually planned to be competitive. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing Josh Rosen moving forward to see if he's going to be our is he going to be our quarterback of the future. I'm not going to write him off just yet. As he's he's a lock, but we just gonna we just gonna play this by ear for now and, and see what Josh Rosen has to offer for for the, for the weeks to come. But it just goes back to why did you trade Lermy Tunsil? Why did you uh, end up letting Jawan James go? Because this offensive line I feel like is a big reason why. Um, it's really going to it's going to stop us from getting a, a full evaluation of Josh Rosen moving forward. Uh before we end up letting the video video go though, I do want to touch on this on this fan duel because it was discussed during the live stream. It's probably like my sixth time saying this. I probably said it like five times in the live stream. It's going to be my sixth time sixth time saying it during the video. But uh yeah, it was a discussion about putting a fan duel lead together like it's 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 literally non-committable honestly because like all you got all i gotta do is just send you the invite and then like you put money in the pot and then the top three players ended up end up getting the uh, getting the pot uh in, in in the fan duel that week so like if you're interested in that just send me an email or send me a message on twitter of your email uh, or any other way of communicating with me, I'll, I'll respond back fairly quick so we can get this joint going. Like minimum, I'll probably say about like ten people, but um, yeah, just 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 send me something. <laughs> just send me something if you're interested with that uh, with that fan duel league. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know what it is. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Miami Dolphins fans, keep your head up. The Miami Dolphins are not tanking. They actually look pretty competitive this week. I'm up out of here.